maybe put this on YouTube. Because I think this, this game's a really good example of, like, you don't have to win your lane purely through just killing your lane opponent. Although I did do that. I, I guess a better way to state it is this is how you win when you're in a counter pick matchup. So a couple of key things to note as my rune choices. I took the nullifying orb. I think this is actually a super underrated rune. Not many people take it. But the main reason I took it is because I'm I'm basically just using it to mitigate like damage and fights. Because they have uh, Ivern, Silas, and Aaliyah, and even Thresh to some extent, they have a lot of magic damage. So I went double MR runes, and then I also went Transcendence and Ability Haste on my cooldowns. So it's more for team fights than lane. No, um, it's for lane as well as team fights, but it's really good against Silas because all of his damage is magic. Like, he's barely going to do physical damage to you. Uh, a key thing that I want to play around this game is that if Shaco is pathing towards me and we see him pathing... Well, he could 3-camp bottom, but if Shaco is pathing towards me and Ivern is also pathing up, uh, which we don't know for sure if he is, but let's just assume he is. If both junglers are pathing up, then I want to be in a spot to where I can help either in a river fight or in a 2v2. And by pushing the lane like this, I'm getting the XP advantage as well as I'm getting the health advantage. Every single time he wants to go for a last hit, I'm making sure that I'm autoing him and like doing damage to him. But he can't just like... Like if I don't do damage to him right now, he's going to be full HP and I'm going to be full HP when both junglers show up, and they win that. They will just straight up win that because, I mean, Silas has his W, and they have Ivern Shield. We don't have nearly as much utility as they do. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm like min-maxing my trades while also shoving the lane. I care more about making sure that I have more minions than he does. I'm only trading when I'm not going to miss a last hit. And when he's going for one. Then after that, I can just sit here and recall. Because I can just TP back to, to top tower. And then hold the wave. Which I actually... At first, I was going to walk back. But the more that I, I saw him, like, I, I had my camera on Silas. I had my camera on Silas, and I was making sure that, like, okay, if he's gonna arch of the wave, then I want to walk up. I want to teleport in and freeze. And I actually messed up a little bit. But we see Ivern bottom, so I know that it's a 1v1. Now I want to hold the, the wave. And actually, it ends up not being good for me because neither jungler showed up top. If my jungler shows up top, then this is like a free kill. But I still forced him on an awkward recall timer. He can't get lost chapter from this, right? He couldn't get lost chapter even if he had recalled before, but... Uh, just the most important thing here is that I want him to recall in an awkward timer. Is Silas supposed to get level 2 first here and he just didn't capitalize? Yes. Um, Silas can get the push first, but Malphite does actually beat him level 1. So it can be tricky for him to do that. Like, he has to be able to auto the wave uh, before I do. But if I'm just on top of things, then I can't. This is really unfortunate. My team uh, kind of griefed this fight, to be honest. If I could have gotten there, like, five seconds earlier, this is a triple kill. But it's whatever, we can't chase.
So because Silas doesn't have Lost Chapter yet, I can actually play to burn his mana. If you notice, Silas has really high mana costs. Uh, Q is 70, W is 65, or no, E is 65, sorry, W is 70, Q is 55. Um, but his W is like the most dangerous ability, right? Because he gets health every time he uses it on a champion. So I'm mostly playing to burn his mana because that increases my chance of not only winning a fight versus him, but it also increases the chance of like us winning a team fight. If our team just decides to like fight in river or a fight breaks out mid and Silas rotates, then he's going to have less mana and potentially not be able to like finish off a kill. And I don't care if I'm down CS. As long as he can't get kills. Like, I'm, I'm more playing for him to not be able to capitalize on kill potential. So now, now the thing is, he recalled, but I have control of the wave because it's bouncing back. So what I want to do is, like, slow push, crash on, like, wave 2 or 3. And then I want to rotate mid just to see if I can find something. He can never fight me in this wave, because he actually will lose it. Uh, I'm an entire level up on him right now, and he's just perma-tanking minions. And he recognizes that, so he just backs up, and I'm like, cool. Now, I have an opportunity to go mid, because he's dealing with the wave. And even though we end up not getting this kill, that's mostly because Ryze messed up. That's not because uh, I messed up. Like, Ryze used his abilities on the wave. It's fine, because now Talia is forced in an awkward spot. She can't rotate to whatever's happening down here, and she also can't recall, because Ryze can permashove. And so that created an advantage for Ryze. Because now Ryze gets the um, control of when he wants to recall or not. Which I guess he ended up dying, never mind. <laughs> but... Okay. Here's something to note. So after I made this play, I was just like, okay, I'm going to recall. And I teleport top. Silas gets greedy here, and this is where I pay attention. Silas is 70% health right now, right? He's missing 500 HP. So here, I just want to teleport onto the wave and just fight him. It doesn't matter that I don't have ult. Because, in theory, if we're just both fighting here, I had the health advantage, and he doesn't. Now, it helps that I have flashed this ult. But I think I still may have killed him there. Even if I didn't flash. I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, I, I forced an opportunity... ...for a solo kill. By teleporting in there. That's like, alright, cool. Now I get to massively have an advantage. And I was like, Silas can have a teleport timer here, and I thought he might teleport bottom, so I was looking down here just in case. But then I saw Ivern was top. So I was like, okay. Silas probably isn't making a cross map play. Sure enough, he greets to teleport back to the tower, and I'm like, cool. Now, if he's under my tower, recognize this spot right here. Because there's no cannon, I know that if I ult him under tower with the minions, I hit ult, then E, I clear all the minions, and now he's forced to tank at least two tower shots. 
And that will automatically win me a fight if we fight to the death. Which, sure enough, I do exactly that. One, two. Now, it doesn't matter that he has his mythic. And this fight ends up being really close, but, uh... Yeah, I kind of just... I, I forced his hand, basically. He didn't have to... I don't know what he was doing there. Let, let's look at his uh, cooldowns. Because I think he could have flashed away. No, actually, he didn't have a Z. Never mind. Okay, yeah, he just needed to wait until his W was back up. So what he should have done... Okay, after he lands this W right here, walk away. He needs to walk away and then just kite me like this. Keep this spacing. It doesn't matter that I hit a Q. Keep this spacing. Do not walk into the Malphite. Because then he just dies. But if he had waited half a second, he might have actually been able to kill me. But, this goes back to my rune choice. Remember how I said I went double MR, I went ability haste uh, rune instead of attack speed rune, and I went transcendence and nullifying orb. The only reason I'm able to make this kill happen is because my W comes back up in time because of the amount of cooldown that I have. So I use my W right here, right? Seven seconds. And also I'm maxing it. My W comes back right now, and this is what allows me to kill him. If I didn't have this cooldown rune in Transcendence, I do not kill him there. But I'm straight up getting an extra 18 ability haste off of that. Then pretty much from here on out, it's like a free game. Because if you're winning a bad matchup like this, and you're getting all this gold. I get all the plates. Because I know he doesn't have teleport. And it's like, cool. Now I'm up like a thousand gold. And then at this point, the game's kind of over. So I'll be more useful than the, the Silas. He can never 1v1 me because I have the two level advantage. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's look for a play around the map. And I notice that my team is making a play down here. So I want to proxy. And the reason I want to proxy here is because the next wave that comes out hasn't even spawned yet. But by me clearing this here, I can make a play and then get back to top before these minions ever meet. But if I had just cleared the minions in front of his tower, I wouldn't have been able to roam here. And that's pretty much game. I don't think I need to go over the rest of the VOD. Like, you guys kind of understand it at this point.